Al Rolls is the reporter thrown into the secretive world of the 4X supermodel where nothing is as it seems. Beware the techno monk and steer clear of Professor Coe and his two assistants. Give the senior trader a wide berth and don't expect any sense from the risk manager. Hello, I'm the senior trader for the Forex Supermodel and this is um, a continuation of the trading psychology series and this is part three which is entitled um, Behind the Economic Calendar. So let's just head it up. Behind the Economic Calendar. Right, now, a lot of you, well, all, pretty much all traders are familiar with the economic calendar um, and uh, its its relevance to um, trading. Now, um, we're going to look at this in terms of um, psychology, obviously, but in order to do that, we're going to look at three major components. And, it, and it's often uh, our view that um, particularly uh, novice or day traders and, and to, to a degree um, other traders um, only scratch the surface of the value of the economic calendar. It, it really is a, a core item in, in your, um, your armory. So the way we tend to look at the economic calendar um, is in terms of uh, three, three basic approaches. We look at it in, a, in an operational sense And we look at it in a tactical sense. Uh, and we look at it in a strategic sense. Now, <laughs> the majority of um, uh, new traders, uh, as I say, or day traders, really only look at the economic calendar uh, on, on an operational basis and by that I mean that they look at the economic calendar as, as a, a headline uh, gatherer for what's going to happen today, how is, how is their trade going to be knocked about by incoming data headline risk. So that's, that's predominantly the way the majority of traders are trained and indeed look at the economic calendar. They look at it in an operational sense, a day-to-day -day sense. Um, for example, if, uh, I don't know, um, CPI data is coming out for Germany, then uh, they basically, uh, and they're, they're in the Euro complex, then, then that's the way they look at it. It's quite one-dimensional in a way, but um, that's how they look at it. Now, that has all sorts of implications um, psychologically uh, as well as um, in terms of your trading performance. Now, now if you break down uh, the economic calendar into sort of a time issue, so we've got uh, today, which depending on what day of the week you're looking at, so you could be in this week, so it's this week, and you could be midweek, so this week. So at the very best, people are looking at this week, and they're predominantly looking at today for headline risk. Um, if you go on social media, people are, are pumping out what's going to happen today. Uh, analysts are talking about today, generally. Um, so, obviously, your day can be any part of the week. 
So you, ne you need to uh, think a little bit more strategically um, and, and so you need, to, you need to factor in last week so more sophisticated traders will be, will be aware of what happened last week. And um, beyond that, um, they'll be looking at next week. Now, so that's that's basically um, we we'll move from basic what's happening today to what's happening this week. How has it been affected by last week, and what's going to happen next week? Now. Now that's more of a strategic overview, so we're starting to get um, a strategic overview of the economic calendar. I mean, basically, um, for those of you who are not, you know, with it on the economic calendar, the economic calendar normally, if you look at them, uh, they're looking at um, data releases which are timed, and they tend to give you a, a consensus view, which is what people think is going to come out, so the number that they think is going to come out what happened previously so you've got like a consensus of previous and once the number is out you can get revisions which can be important which are often overlooked so revision to number up or down so that can you can get a poor number say in uh, I don't know, CPI to use that again and then you get a positive revision and it changes the whole tone of the situation so so that's that's part of it and then then obviously you get an actual so in a way it's it's a sort of a it's a variance analysis isn't it it's uh it's it's how much do does does the actual vary from the consensus or the or the predicted so that's that's what you're looking at now remember um as i said the, so you can go from a, from an operational daily view to a more strategic uh, overview um, and that takes us only so far. Um, and then what you've got to think about, how do, how do the professionals actually think about and use the economic calendar? Because they use, I can assure you, they use it in a very different way uh, to, to basic operational and even uh, on a strategic level. So uh, let's, let's have a think about that then. So, and ultimately, how is this thinking going to affect your trading which is what this series is about so so really um the professionals or more sophisticated economic tech calendar users are looking at the frequency of the data and the size of the data so if we just get rid of this so um so by that i mean uh, so the frequency and the size. So now normally economic calendars uh, split data up into into a tier system. Um, the most tier one, the most volatile uh, data, so it has the most weight. Medium data tier two and and low key data tier three. So non-farm payrolls for example would be tier one data um you know uh rates decision would be a tier one data uh, event and so on so if you're the way the way um more sophisticated traders are looking at the economic calendar is they're looking at the frequency of the data so how often is the data coming out so it's concentration if you like and the relative size of the data, so what tiers are coming out. You know, it, are, we, are we coming into a period of um, tier one data coming out, boom, 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 in certain complexes? So let's assume that the bulk of uh, trading action is dollar, euro, yen, pound. And, and I know the other side of it, which is the... Uh, the models which we're going to talk about at some stage, the CAD, the AUD, the NZD, and the CHUF. So they're, they're in, in a modelling perspective, they're bolt-ons. Now we can talk about that as, a, as another issue, but 
So if you're looking at the frequency, say, of dollar, of dollar complex data, they'll be looking at, at, are we running into a thick period of dollar data and, and at what size? Um, because that has a bearing on uh, their thinking and their psychology. So are we, are we getting a period of thick dollar data with thick euro data? Now, that's important. Or are we getting a, a period of just thick dollar data on its own? So if you've got, if you've got both, say dollar and euro, then you have potential for dollar, uh, dollar euro pairs or euro dollar pairs um, to get both barrels in one direction. So you could get like very strong dollar data um, and very weak euro data. So that would get, you know, the euro would get both barrels then because you'd have, you'd have the, the dollar shooting up and, and, the, and the euro potentially shooting down. Or it might be more nuanced, you could get like a mixture of both. So that is, that is important from, a, from a, 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 a planning and a trading psychology part, point of view. So um, what, what do we know then? So the frequency and the size of the data, that's what they're looking at. So they're, they're looking at, uh, at what's happened, how the market has reacted maybe last week to the data and what we're running into. So, so that's, um, that's an important issue. We're also looking, uh, we're also looking at um, data gaps. So data gaps. The data gaps are very important and often overlooked again. So if you've got like a week of heavy dollar data, load of yen and a load of pound, then there's a noticeable gap here for the euro. Now, if the euro um, is relatively data free, but all these other complexes are um, getting headline risk, then that, that affects their behavior because, because it, it all gets uh, computed into their overall view of the market. So, so in this case, um, the euro, um, would be the uh, would be the gap complex, and and that has implications which we'll talk about in a minute. So, um, when large traders or market makers are going to make a move, they need to know what we just talked about, but they also are looking at um, a tactical situation. So they want to be a tactical basically they're less bothered about the operational side until they're actually involved in the trading they're bothered about the strategic side and they're most bothered about tactically because it's the tactics which will decide providing they've got the strategic end of it right um, and the operational side um, will be down to them anyway so tactically what they're looking for is a situation where the odds will be in their favour and they're not going to be messed about. So they're looking for um, a window where they can operate their particular view. And they don't want their view being mucked up by, by data or outside events. The, the only thing they can't control large traders is other large traders. You know, um, and unless they got some sort of tacit agreement with them, which is it, which ultimately is illegal, then uh, they have to be wary of other large traders in the market, maybe going against their positions. So that's another issue. But tactically, what they're looking for is um, a situation where they can engineer a situation where their their trades have a high chance of success, a low chance of being mucked about by data prints, and, and the ideal situation for that is in a relatively low uh, liquidity uh, environment. So a low liquidity environment, which quite often coincides with like market holidays um, and uh, sort of shutdowns in the markets, uh, 
predominantly market holidays, but you can get other situations as well. So, so you get a low liquidity situation, or maybe maybe at a time you know that not many traders are are active. Um, so, low liquidity. So they're looking for things like market holidays. Um, where, for example, let's suppose Thanksgiving in America, the American markets are, are operating maybe a, a, on a half day or, and, and a lot of the traders are actually, you know, have gone from their desks, then, then they're more likely to have a go at a tactical situation there because they, they can, what muscle they have has a greater effect. So that, that's the psychology of, of low liquidity. So when you get a market holiday, um, uh, you, you need to be aware and you get a market gap in terms of a data gap. So if you get a data gap, like, you know, like there's very little data for the euro um, uh, in that particular scenario, uh, and, then, and then you get a market holiday, you get low liquidity, uh, watch out because some of the bigger players are going to be operating tactically and the other thing they're looking out for is is is, is set patterns which will be latched onto by the bulk of traders now traders are quite often told to look out for patterns um, which so you know, and the standard the standard patterns that most traders can recognise are things like uh, double tops, bottoms, head and shoulders, those type of things. So. Um, and also things like um, multiple tests. Of support and resistance. Now, all those things are supposed to be um, high probability, uh, high probability uh, outcomes for the rank and file trader, double top, um, obvious place to go short, double bottom, obvious place to go long, head and shoulders, breaks the neckline, etc. Uh, multiple tests of support and resistance, nice place to, uh, when it's gone down to the, uh, when it's gone down to the support, so banging along on the support, that's a nice place to go long. Now, these are, these are the sort of default psychological things that they're told to look for, and uh, the other one, obviously, is, is uh, um, uh, uptrends, where you get uh, higher highs and higher lows, and down, downtrends, um, lower lows and lower highs. Traders, the mainstream traders, are taught to, to go long uh, here, long in an uptrend, and short in a downtrend ultimately so and, and if it happens to coincide with with some of their patterns and, and indicators all to the better now the more sophisticated professional traders are well aware of all this um, and they're looking for a situation where maybe uh, um, uh, consistent uh, multiple touch uh, support uh, has been touched and they know full well that um, uh, traders will think that gives the support level more, more credibility and therefore psychologically you, a lot more traders are likely to go on the bounce uh, on the up here and their stops are going to be just here and uh, in a low liquidity environment bingo um, they're going to they're going to take you to the cleaners on the way down and vice versa uh, with the opposite scenario. So, so that is the psychology of 
of the larger traders and the way they attempt to use uh, the economic calendar. And they're ultimately they're using the economic calendar against you uh, rather than for you, obviously. Now, uh, so the other one which we need to mention uh, as a side issue, if you want a, a heads up on, on the way things are changing sometimes on the economic calendar, then if you get a, if you look at the week ahead, so if you've got uh, today, you've got last week, last week, and then, and then you've got next week. Now, if you look at, if you look at next week on the economic calendars, um, you'll see that. As, as you get nearer towards the end of the current week, obviously the data for next week becomes more filled in. But in the early stages, there's, there's, there's gaps. So obviously because the people um, uh, operating the economic calendars are not fully aware of, of the information and they're, they're, dis, they're deciding, the market uh, analysts are deciding on the consensus for next week. Now, however... What you, t what you can find quite regularly is, is if you look and monitor next week and you look at these, these uh, consensus figures and then suddenly, suddenly maybe we're on about Wednesday in the current week, you'll see a consensus figure for next week be altered and it could be altered up or down obviously. So if it's, if it's a significant Tier, tier one uh, uh, data and, and you see the consensus figure for next week suddenly be altered supposing it's uh, uh, an inflation figure and it's, old, it's revised upwards now most of this information disappears under the radar it goes unnoticed because, because once it's changed they don't show you what it used to be so when you, when you look at the economic calendar, even if you're reasonably diligent uh, and you look, you look ahead next week and you see, oh yes, CPI, German CPI plus, I don't know, 0.7, uh, yeah, that's fine. But if it was, if it was plus 0.2, like on Tuesday in the week before, and suddenly they've revised it up to plus 0.7, that's a hell of a change, and that's going to have significant effect on the markets going forward and and the professionals and the more astute uh, economic calendar users have latched on to this and this information has disappeared now because that that figure they don't they don't nicely leave that there for you it's gone so you you if you're aware of any any significant changes in in consensus for the following week as as it comes in then you can even get consensus changes early for things like rate decisions as well. And that's even more important. So that's a valuable tip. And, and obviously, uh, professionals and bigger traders have the time and energy and the infrastructure to be able to you know, monitor all this stuff. And, and they're, they're aware. So if you had that situation, um, you know, that, and that was the, the German CPI or something, then then that would be very valuable information moving along. And then we come to this other thing, this so-called front running. Now, front running, front running the economic calendar uh, is, is another thing which you need to be aware of. Now, quite often, if you're a relatively um, new to trading and you can see things, uh, you know, relentlessly moving in a certain direction and they don't seem to have any, any uh, core uh, catalyst, you know, you often see on social media sites, uh, they're saying, oh, the information's been leaked and, you know, there's inside information, they knew it. And, well, it's a possible, but it's, it's not likely uh, en masse. Um, and, and what tends to happen is the, is, is the, the more informed players have, are front-running into 
uh, some significant tier one, usually tier one data. So, so tier one uh, data. Suppose, suppose that's next week. Next week, and it's uh, I don't know Wednesday. Um, they they may well be be, be front running into that, and and if they've been given a nod on on the changing consensus. And that information is relatively freely available if you can put the time in and put the infrastructure in your organisation around it. Then you can front run relatively with confidence into that data uh, because you know it's going to be uh, positive or negative or whatever, whatever you think it's going to be. So, well, you know as far as you're concerned, you never know. But um, there you go. So uh, that's, the, that's the other thing. You need to look the way, look at the way the market's moving. It are, is somebody front running something for no apparent reason into next week, and and if they are, um, just be aware of it because because that has implications for your trading and your psychology. Um, you know the standard thing is uh, is that most novice traders just say, oh. They've had inside information. The whole system's rigged, but that that is not true. Basically, all you're seeing is more sophisticated thinking running through. Um, so, so that's the the idea of front running, which is all linked to these views. So, just to recap, then, don't just use the economic calendar in terms of uh, an operational tool, consensus out for the day, bang, headline risk. Think about it. From a, a strategic view, so look at last week, look at look at the next week, and then think about it from a tactical perspective. Think about it. So, um, if I was a large trader, when would I want to have a go, and when might I have a go? Because, in the light of what we said, we don't. They don't want to suddenly be on the wrong side of headline risk if they've got large positions. It, it, it makes no sense. So they need to get the odds in their favour. And then you need to think, has the consensus changed? Are they front running into, into some data next week? You know, there's a lot of clues behind the scene. What is the frequency of the, the data? So you can almost plot it out. If you did a, if you did a, day, uh, a day chart and you plotted out tier one data, you know, you could get a, a graph that you could say, you know, the, the data on a cumulative basis, um, tier one data peaks on, on Wednesday. You know, and, and that, that is a useful uh, tool as well, um, which more sophisticated traders are using. So don't, don't underestimate what's behind the economic calendar. And the gaps in the economic calendar are quite often more informative than what's there. Everybody knows the data that's coming out. What, what you need to think about is what is not coming out, or if that's coming out, why, why or where is the gap? The gap, say, for the euro. The euro data will be, and if you've got, if you've got um, uh, dollar data ramming through at a rate of knots, but euro is very, is very sparse, then this has psychological implications for your trading. Now, I hope all that was useful. Uh, we've got part four coming up, uh, so take a look out for that, and thank you very much.